Hi, I'm Dexter. I'm a second year natural science student at Exeter and uh, today we are looking at Faraday waves which we're doing as our extended project for second year and the idea is is that we've got a speaker underneath the bottom of this plate here which has, we've got a dish attached on top of it which is pretty much we've got a frequency going through a sound amplifier which is putting this frequency through the liquid and that is making waves form. When we're at certain low frequencies, it'll just be standing waves, so it looks like the waves are standing still, rather than when we're at higher ones, fa these Faraday waves which form, which are like these moving waves and these fancy look looking patterns. And we are changing the different shapes of containers, so like having different depths and different, just like, rather than we're gonna have some pentagons and circles, that kind of stuff, to see how the patterns change for the, uh, th for the Faraday waves. A couple of the applications for it are First, like it's used a lot, like in biology, like the how cells move as well as how they form. Is it a lot to do with the waves? Because obviously a lot of cells are in liquids at low levels, but the way they move is very wave-like, as well as in galaxies, how they form, which is quite interesting. Because of, obviously you know, the Big Bang came out with a big explosion. So then the expansion of it is based on the waves that they're moving at, which is obviously a further way. That's how galaxies are formed and that kind of stuff. But Obviously, that it's, it's something apparent through a lot of, both from already down to low biology to obviously up to galaxies and astrophysics. Hello, my name is Joe. I'm a PhD student here at Exeter. Uh, my PhD is in metamaterials, looking at um, methods of data storage on flexible surfaces. Uh, another part of my job is to be a demonstrator here in the lab with the second year undergrads. Uh, this involves supporting them with their experiments, looking at things including Faraday waves and percolation effects. This time we've basically been given the choice of three sort of different experiments we can do. So a couple of biology ones, a couple of um, chemical ones and a couple of physics ones. So we've got um, oscillating clock reactions, which Emma and Lucy are sort of setting up at the moment. Um, and basically an oscillating clock reaction goes between, sort of in the name, it periodically goes between two colours. Well, that's what you can physically see. So we've tried it in 3D and um, these next couple of weeks we're sort of trying it in 2D instead because in 3D you can basically just see one colour and then another colour but um, if you do it in 2D you can see these cool like concentric circles like you can see the periods changing right in front of you. So yeah, we've basically been working towards setting up a final experiment so we're doing just preliminary ones at the moment. And then in a second, um, that one over there which is Ferroin um, is going to be put in and that's an indicator so when we're filming it with the Raspberry Pi which you can see set up behind um, it's clearer and it means you can analyze it later on. To be honest we sort of picked because it looked cool but actually you can use it to um, replicate uh, Krebs cycles and things like that so we're varying the viscosity for ours so that will probably change um, how fast the um, circles are formed so we'll be filming time lapses and analyzing the time lapses um, to see, but the reaction that you could do with fractals, and that can be used to visualise them. So with diffusion, because it's a chaotic reaction, you can see fractals being formed because of the chaos that's taking place, which is really, really cool actually.